Was the Revolutionary War about independence? Was the Civil War about slavery? Was World War II about oppression? Yes to all, but not how you think. America declared its independence on July the 4th, 1776. The Revolutionary War was fought between April 19, 1775 to September 3rd, 1783. The Treaty of Peace was also signed September 3rd, 1783. The King of England, Prince George, and the Duke of Brunswick in Luxembourg represented the Holy Roman Empire. Franklin, John Jay, and John Adams, who were all esquires, represented the United States. In the treaty, Article 4, it is agreed that we, the creditors, will recover in full value in sterling money all debts heretofore contracted. At the end of the war, the U.S. owed France approximately 7 million livres, and the debt would be due in seven years. In 1783, plus seven years, put the debt due in 1790. The 7 million American owed grew to 18 million because of continued borrowing. An individual or corporation could borrow money for seven years. So in 1790, the debt had to be restructured. In preparation for this, the Constitution was written. A nation can borrow money for 70 years per international banking laws. So the new government put all federal lands and buildings up for collateral against renewing the debt. France had sold the debt to the Bank of England, so this is when the United States government began paying rent to England on its lands and buildings. 1789 plus 70 years is 1859. At this point, the debt had ballooned to $90 million to have the money, so the Bank of England needed more collateral to extend the debt an additional 70 years. At this time, America requested all of the individual states to sign over their properties and buildings. And when this request was sent out to the separate sovereign states, the union of the states crumbled. States started seceding from the union and Lincoln declared war to try to hold the nation together to renew the loan. South Carolina was the first to succeed December 20th, 1860. Open war started April the 12th, 1861 and ended April 9th, 1865. The company went bankrupt in 1861. The military took over until 1871. At this time, DC became incorporated. The Act of 1871, a new company was formed called the United States of America Incorporated. They formed franchises. Each state was now titled State of Georgia, State of New York, etc. And the 14th Amendment created a citizen, and the citizen was the trustee. The original Constitution was for the United States. In 1871, it was changed to of the United States. Of means without. So this means the Constitution without the United States. Or the state of Georgia would be the state without Georgia. State without New York. There are two corporations existing at the same time. The Republic still exists. And the state without. At the end of the war, it was time again to restructure the debt. 1859 plus 70 years goes to 1929. This rolls the clock to the Depression and the New Deal. The Federal Reserve was created in 1913 and the interest was to be paid at that time in gold certificates. In 20 years, the gold in Fort Knox was gone. And that gets us to 1933. The debt at this time is 17 billion. The US was bankrupt and the markets crashed. The debt needed to be restructured and the banks required more collateral. This was the beginning of the birth certificate. The all capital letter name is registered. 
Everything that is registered is collateral for the debt. Since March 9, 1933, we have had Proclamation 2040, and all presidents sign it to keep it in effect. Daylight Savings Time went into effect at this time because it is basically military time. The zip codes represent military venues. So again, everything that is registered is collateral for the debt. All personal property, all vehicles, all children. Anything that you register with the state is on loan to you and owned by the Vatican and the Bank of England as collateral for the debt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was sworn in on March 4, 1933. On March the 6th, two days later, it was declared a national emergency and a coup took place. New military orders seized all registered property and from this time forward, all of that registered property is collateral for the national debt. March the 9th, Proclamation 2040 does away with the Trading with the Enemy Act and all citizens are considered enemies of the state. All registered property was put into a trust. 1929 plus 70 years gets us to the year 1999. The debt was five trillion and the corporation is bankrupt once again. The United States all in capital letters corporation was formed. It is technically a French company that is owned by the International Monetary Fund. They run America from offshore and the IMF is owned by the Vatican. Per international law, a country can only go through bankruptcy three times. At the end of 210 years, there's supposed to be a jubilee and all sovereign debt is to be forgiven. In 1999, they brought in the derivatives to help delay the inevitable and there is also a 20 year grace period. This brings us from the year 1999 to 2019. I'm sure you can guess what has happened in 2019. A restructure or a coup is now on the table. These people will not honor a jubilee. Now we see a push for digital currency. The universal income is designed to snare people into a contractual obligation. Now they are pushing hard for a medical passport for trade. If a natural food has been genetically modified, it can be patented. Is the same true for you? Contract to be binding, all parties must be fully informed of the agreement. So in reality, it's fraud. The word mint means mind. Govern means control. It's all mind control that is used to steer the masses. Now you have to ask yourself, is this just a story or is it maybe something else entirely? <laughs>